The Season 14 jungle is actually about to go through quite a massive change. In fact, all of your pathing is going to be subtly adjusted, and if you're not ready, you're gonna feel it. Whether you hate the Void Nuggies and you never take them, or you die for the Void Nuggies because they give you purpose in life, we've all asked, why do they actually exist? They are now being shifted to spawn from 5 minutes to 6 minutes. The buffs that you need to spawn mites is going from 5 to 4, and the damage that they apply is going up. And the question is, after these changes go through, is it going to be worth dying for the grubs? So in this video, I just want to go over the exact pathing changes that are going to happen when grubs go from 5 minutes to 6 minutes, show you some of the thought processes you need to know in order to actually succeed. So ultimately, we're going to use the map for this one, a nice little dynamic manual map in Photoshop that I've made, just so we can have a good sort of real world understanding, live coaching of what this means. Because we all know from the beginning of the year that when you are actually pathing like this to the bottom side and taking a scuttle crab, maybe you're ganking the bottom lane, maybe you're ganking the mid lane, you go back to base, and then you're gonna go back to your Krugs and Raptors, it's already five minutes, right? Like in theory, that's the idea. If you get a gank off here and you're able to go back to base and you're able to go to the top side, you will be level five at five minutes, you will be primed to finish this off and go for the grubs. That has never been a question. The question has been, is it worth it to do that when the enemy jungler in this exact same situation is actually pathing in the opposite direction? So imagine you did exactly what I just said. The enemy jungler starts on the opposite side of the map and, you know, does their full clear here, does this. Okay, I'm doing this. I get a gank off and go back to base. Right. Then they come out of base and they do the Krugs, they do the Raptors. Here was the question that the Grandmaster jungler was asking me. In this situation, if I know I can do these or go to my bottom side, because these would have respawned and these would have respawned. Obviously, this is not on the map anymore. Now, obviously, I have at five minutes the option to cut it for the dragon. I can counter gank them bottom lane. I can just gank them bottom lane. I can gank them mid lane. Like all of these decisions were possible on the bottom side of the map. But at five minutes, because of the grubs, and that's a five for sure, we decided, hey, we should go ahead and take these, right? In the meantime, the enemy jungler, if you do, in fact, decide to go for these things, the enemy jungler can just basically say, okay, well, I can't contest this because I have no prior in these situations, which means I can't fight you, maybe I don't even beat you, and I will be in a 3v1 and I'll die. The problem is most junglers have been, you know, dying for it, <laughs> which you don't want to do. So what they would do then is say, fine, I'll counter jungle your bottom side and dive your bottom lane, especially if I have pressure this way, or I'm just going to go ahead and do the dragon. And that's where things get really interesting. But as always, learning more about how to jungle with these strategies that I'm talking about and becoming the savant you need it to be, the best way is always to go through Vakari.gg. Updated courses with season 14 components. We have that dedicated program to help you climb faster. Coaching, coaching classes, coaching VOD libraries of all kinds. Special weekly content you'll see nowhere else. Q&As, patch note rundowns, community events to get better, as well as all of this hosted in a private jungle discord. And if there is one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers go from low elo to high elo, as seen by the great number of success stories from the end of last season and already the beginning of season 14. So to climb faster than everybody you know and to jungle diff every game you play, head to vakaya.gg or click the link in the description below. Now, this is going to change completely with it spawning at 6 minutes. Here you had to kind of trade the payoff of is it worth being counter jungle and losing my bottom side's life and maybe focusing on top side because then, of course, if you go ahead and do these grubs in this situation, you can then just counter jungle this side, right? But you're losing bottom side and dragon guaranteed at 5 minutes. Here's what's going to change at 6 minutes. Let's go ahead and slap our champions in here. Let's go with a Briar versus an Evelyn because it's a horrible matchup for Evelyn, but also Briar has a certain different way of playing the game than Evelyn. Now, in this situation, let's envision we are Evelyn and we're gonna start on our top side and we're gonna pass down, okay? Let's just take that. We'll go Raptors, we'll go Red, then we'll slide into this nice sequencing, okay? We'll take a Scuttle Crab, uh, but we'll, because we're done early, maybe we go ahead and gank the bottom lane. You know, good things, good things only. And yes, I've reversed it to be what it should be. Red side should have the red pen. Now, after this, obviously, if you have great opportunities to hang around and deep ward their jungle before you base, you will do it, right? We understand that's all exactly what's going to happen. Then out of base now, you're going to, let's just undo this quickly for you. Then out of base, what you're going to do is do your second Krugs and do your second Raptors. Now, five minutes stings. Assuming your timing is, of course, on point. Do we gank top lane? We decide not to. You can. Obviously, you can. And you can obviously gank mid lane as well after this if you wanted to. Those are all hypotheticals. But now, unlike the Diana in that jungle decision-making video, our decisions are pretty damn simple. Here afterwards, if we don't gank the mid lane, we don't gank the top lane, we can just path down, continue our sequencing. Well, no blue buff because that's obviously gone. We'll do this. And now this is an option. Should we have good prior bottom lane? Ganking this is an option. And obviously ganking this is an option again. Now, from the enemy jungle perspective, from Evelyn's point of view, Let's just say that the Briar started on the bottom side, so we're going the opposite direction. Not uncommon here, we'll do this. 
no gangs top lane full clear let's just keep it simple if there are gangs and you want to go ahead and do that uh be my guest obviously but we'd be in the same situation whereby the briar full clears scuttles ganks comes back out of base and now it has these two camps to take right the sequencing of the briar will be opposite to the evelyn this will respawn and this will respawn we agree on this the briar now can decide to go all right there's no grubs at five minutes there is a dragon on the map at the moment Evelyn's going to be full sequencing all the way down looking at the lane states because of course the, the briar should be looking at these lane states as well to try and predict where the enemy jungle is going to go if she understands that Evelyn's going to outfarm her, out tempo and farm the other direction, the Briar now doesn't have to think, well, you know, I can do the five minute grubs because the Evelyn's not going to be able to contest them. No, the Briar can just say, fine, I'm getting in your face because I actually have bottom lane prior. I actually have mid lane prior, potentially, right? Assessing the map is always the most important thing. Map is king is the rule by which we live on this channel. In this situation, though, what happens is now the Evelyn is going to be pushed out potentially. And here's where things get really interesting in that we've talked about this for many years. Jungling when you're being invaded, jungling in losing lane states. The Evelyn will be invaded here and most likely will just have to retract and go back to base, right? 100% you have to go back to base here because at five minutes, the Briar would have decided to invade you. Okay, so if you're following me, you now understand that the Briar has decided to cut in and pressure the Evelyn and obviously wants to try and take this dragon and maybe, you know, protect bottom lane from any sort of gangs. And this is essentially the side of the map we're playing. The Evelyn now has to realize, okay, look, I have to leave the situation and go back to base, which she does, right? She goes back to base here. We can draw the brush. But now, if you at five minutes are level five on this Raptor camp, and the only decisions you have are gank mid lane or carry on sequencing or cut into the dragon, you can always cut into the dragon at level five at five minutes if you want to. As an Evelyn, I would probably never do this. But on certain champions, you can. Vi is included, especially if the Briar dies and does some dumb things. But in this situation now, you finish this off. So if we imagine five minutes here, we go ahead and do this. 520, we go ahead and do this. 545, Briar runs in my face. Oh no, this is so sad. Go back to base. Not six minutes. Ding, ding, ding. Six minutes have arrived. These are definitely numbers. And what this means is if Briar wants to pressure me out of the bottom side quadrant here and go for these plays, you can beeline for this. Now, obviously, this is where you have to factor in uh, the prior situation again, always a prior situation, but you can still make this direct play. So instead of having this decision be open up for debate at five minutes, the decision becomes different based upon what the Briar does in terms of do we want to secure these six minute grubs? Now, just as equally, the Briar could decide an alternative style. The Briar could say, okay, listen, I understand that you're going to be sequencing down. So I think what I should be doing is actually not cutting you off like we might predict here, Mr. Vakayu and everybody else watching. Maybe I should just carry on sequencing. Maybe I can go and create prior top lane. Maybe I can gank mid lane and then create prior from that situation. And what this would then allow the Briar to do is if Evelyn stays out in this particular situation, right? If Evelyn stays out in this particular situation and finishes the clear and goes for this bottom lane game, because maybe, you know, if you don't have prior as the Briar and this lane is actually pushed up. If Briar could have invaded you here and cut you off because they're prior, that means the lane is 19% gankable for the Evelyn. The so Briar can say, listen, why don't I sacrifice my bottom lane here? Because my win condition perhaps is this juicy Fiora on the top side. Okay, and who's winning the lane? And because grubs are way more useful on teams who actually are going to hit the turrets pre-14, that's important if you've got a real Aurelian soul mid lane sagging, never going to hit turrets. And, you know, like they mean less, so I'm not going to factor them in as much. Tristanas, Fioras, Cluds, things like this that can whack them a lot. I want these new grubs. Now, that means the Briar can stay out. And again, if it's five minutes when the Briar goes ahead and does this over here, let me use green now so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Because as things get a little messy, get a bit excited. Let me use green, actually. There we go. So what we have here is the Briar saying, look, at five minutes, for me, I'm doing my second Raptors. Yes? Instead of cutting the Evelyn off, because there's nothing to do on the top side at five minutes anymore, why don't I just go ahead and do my five minutes, five minutes, ten respawn walls, do my five minute, 37 respawn grub, invest in ganking the top lane, and I'll have this for free. Because if I see the Evelyn actually commit to this gank on the bottom side, then nothing else matters for me other than the fact that I'm top side, Evelyn's bottom side, and I can easily go ahead and snack away those grubs. And because Evelyn's very, very unlikely to snack away this dragon as a sort of cut play, and just instead, like the Evelyn's not going to cut down here at level five and do this, right? No matter what, especially if you don't have Bop Briar. So the Evelyn's always going to be resequencing her cams. The Briar could play around that and basically say, well, I'm just going to let you do that, and I'll secure the grubs over my win condition for your. And obviously, if we go back to the green pen here quickly, if you're doing your second sequencing as, as Briar, don't need to keep going up like this. You can always cut in and gank first, as I said. You can cut in and gank first, and that's really what that is about. 
So in summary, what's going to happen here is that five minutes, your decision making is going to be a lot less. Do I trade my camps and bottom side quadrant for a potential cut into the grubs? And it's going to become a bit more. All right, because I'm pathing away from the grubs in this situation because I started on the top side, the enemy jungler who started on the bottom side, and I know I've swapped the pens around again, I'm sorry. <laughs> she will be in prime position to just sequence twice and then take these. So you can, in theory, sequence twice and just take the grubs. The timing will work out perfectly, especially if you don't need to gank these lanes, right? Because if this respawns at 537, 540, 542, depending on uh, how quickly your first clear went, then, you know, as six minute dings, you're right there to celebrate good times with your fellow grubby nuggies and enjoy them. And if the enemy jungle decided in this particular situation, right, to path in the same direction, that's when the next fight is going to be. Let's swap the pens back around just to keep you guys on your toes. So if you do two full sequences and you go for this, and then the Evelyn does two full sequences, but starts on the bottom side, right? Back to base, another sequence. Now you've got to contest. So who is prior? Who's stronger at this particular moment? That's where the fight's going to happen. So it's nice about cutting after you do a full clear plus another quadrant and more about how you cut and react and base around that second quadrant. But the most important thing that I have not yet mentioned is the following. Because of the way the grubs worked previously, I always hated and despised and never understood this clear here. Okay, because you do this, go back to base, and then you can now take this again, two, three, into grubs, right? This extra cap makes no sense because it's not translated to experience advantage and it's not translated to gold advantage. What effectively is happening is you're just wasting time doing an extra raptor camp when you could have just done a lane or warded somewhere and invaded the enemy jungle, done something way more proactive on the map. This, however, is important because what it means, my friends, is that your base timings are very important. In the situation here where the Evan went back to base twice, your item spikes are going to matter. So if you do a full clear, then you base, you do a full clear, you do some stuff, and maybe the bride tries to match you and bad things happen, you go back to base. Now you go for the grub fight together again, you have the gold advantage, you've been back to base twice. Whereas if the bride does the same thing here, all right, decides to cut up to the, she would have only been back to base once. So what you have to factor in is the timing of the grubs at six minutes, how many times you've based, how strong you are as well relative to what, ha what has happened on the map in terms of clears. Now, I know we focus a lot on full clears here because that's definitely where this matters a lot more. But if you are someone who's a bit more aggressive, like a Briar style champion, and you want to go ahead, that's a black pen. But if you do want to do something a little bit more different, like the Briar, and you're kind of focusing on your ganks and things like this, all it means is that when you delay these respawns, like say you do a lot of time ganking early and then you do this late and now you go back to base, it's already five minutes, you're going to have these camps up and then you can just cut in like you used to. So if you are someone who likes to gank early after three camps, you're going to be in the same situation, except you can fill this time, this extra minute from five to six with ganks, with pressure. You don't have to full sequence. And that's where a ganking jungler's approach would be slightly, slightly different. Uh, hopefully you follow exactly what I mean there. Just to recap. I do this, well, not this, you start You start here, I do this, I gank this, I go back to base, I see a gank mid lane, cool, I see a gank top lane, cool, I take a scuttle crab. Now I've got all of this to take. I don't, I'm not worried about Evelyn counter jungling my red side, so I do take it. Now I go back to base for the first time. And so I'm gonna go back onto the map here. This is great, I'll take this one because it's respawned, this one because it's respawned. Now it's already six minutes, now I need to cut in. And a lot of the time in the Hilo games on the gameplay channel and on this channel, you would have seen many junglers have these exact scenarios. So you'd still be doing a clear plus half a quadrant. The difference is you'd be able to fill that time with a minute of ganks. And the enemy jungler who's just full sequencing, maybe they just decide, you know what, I'm just gonna sequence and sequence and gank this twice and gank this again, maybe I'll gank here, and then secure this with my bottom lane. And that's a trade you have to make because very few times you see people rushing that five minute dragon. And if you wanna cover that, I guess we might as well while we're here on the whiteboard, let's objectively, haha, <laughs> pun in, not intended, but we'll take it, Look at what happens if someone does, in fact, do cool stuff, and then at five minutes, go straight for this, right? Five minutes takes this one, go straight for this. From Evan's perspective, right, you're not necessarily going to do anything about that. From Evan's perspective, if you're on a second sequence here, right, so say we full cleared, we've scuttled, we've ganked, we've gone back to base, we're not going to contest this because maybe we just done it by prior, like maybe we're pushed in. So we're going to take our quadrant, cool, go back to base, and now we can go beeline for these grubs again the Briar will have to make this decision of, okay, am I strong enough to cut across mid lane to contest? Or do I actually just have to go back to base and spend? Unlikely, because you just came from base. So most likely you're gonna be making the decision of, do I contest or do I just sequence and protect from counter jungling and then contest in some capacity, right? So that's the interesting thing. If you wanna go for the five minute dragon and do the objective ping pong, which means dragon, grubs, 
dragon, grubs, dragon, dragon, herald, baron. Like you just keep swapping side to side as they spawn. You could do that here. And if you are strong enough here and you do have the prior here and the Evan wants to beeline for these grubs, you just cut her off after the dragon, right? Because it will spawn in five minutes. You're going to have to spend time doing it and spend time rotating. By then it's already going to be 545, you know, the earliest I would assume. And thus you can maybe spend time doing wolf camp or setting vision up. Either way, if you're strong enough and your lanes are strong enough, you can fight this grub camp right after the dragon. But bear in mind, if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, the Evan's based twice and you've based once. So factor that in. And of course, if you want to make your jungle decision-making supremely good, watch this video.